Ask the question, have you taken the Lord Jesus as your Savior? And he put yes and a smiley face on it. Amen. <laughs> and uh, it says when. And he put 1 21 2017. January the, two, uh, seven, uh, January the uh, 21st, 2017. This year he got saved. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. That's what the Bible lessons are about. But then they're about helping you grow. We want to see people saved, but then we want to see people disciple. We want to see them grow in the Lord. <coughs> amen. And so, amen. so uh, I'll, 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 uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity this morning to tell you about our work a little bit, about what the Lord's doing. It's not about what we're doing. It's about what the Lord's doing uh, this time. And uh, I just, I'm just so thankful to be used of the Lord. And uh, he's good to us, I'll tell you. And you can't uh, thank him. I can't thank him enough. And again, I uh, can't thank him enough, Brother Brad. And since uh, Brother Brad, first time he came to West Virginia, and he always brings somebody with him, another church with him. And, and it's just been so uh, helpful in our ministry uh, since we got to meet uh, Brother Brad, and Sister Jane, and the family, uh, and uh, Bailey, and Cooper, and, and, and all you, a lot of you folks. Uh, we just. Uh, so thankful uh, to be a, uh, to know you and, and been a blessing in our life uh, by praying for us and then also uh, the, by your support financially. Amen. Brother Brad understands missions. A lot, a lot of people don't understand missions. The Bible says in Acts 1 8, Jesus said, Go uh, into all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, but he said, Go both uh, throughout uh, the world. And, and that word both there, Acts 1 8, means that go at the same time. I used to think uh, when I pastored, I pastored in Wills County for several years, uh, two different churches, and uh, I used to think that, you know, we were to go right around our area, around the church first, get that uh, evangelized, and then we want to reach on out a little further to uh, maybe a little, a little, little further out, another city or something, and then maybe uh, all through North Carolina. And then when we got done with all that, then we would try to reach on out maybe to outside the United States, a little further out. Uh, and I had the understanding that's the way you done missions. But I was all wrong. All wrong. And it says both there in Acts 1 8. Going both. And that means going all at one time. How do you go all at one time? By helping different missionaries. Amen. Uh, supporting different missionaries. Uh, uh, getting out, getting the Word of God out. And that's what uh, we're about. Jesus said, going all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. That's our commission. That's what we're to do. And that's what you're doing. And thank you so much. Uh, it really, really helped us. And the amount you support us every month is really a great help. Okay. That's enough to really make a difference in our ministry. And so we can just reach out a little farther. The more money we get, the further we go, the more we do, okay? And when the Lord showed me to do something, I try to go do it. Uh, whatever it might be, uh, we try to be at it, amen. So, uh, Matt, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders of the obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Mm. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. There we'll stop there. My thought today is, is God pleased with you? Is God pleased with you? I ask that question all the time. Lord, are you pleased with me? And uh, what do you have to do to please God? He's a big God. A lot of folks have a little God. But I tell you, God's a big God. He wants to be a big God to you. He wants to be a big God in your life. He don't want to be a little God in your life. He wants to be a huge God, a big God, not like this big building here, a beautiful building. That's God. He's big. He wants to be big in your life. But you must let Him. He'll be just as big as you'll let Him. If you want to keep Him like that, He'll stay like that. But if you want to get Him big, hey man, He'll get big. Hey man. I get excited, folks. Hey man, don't get I tell you. Amen. It's good to be saved. It's good to know we're saved, but it's good to be pleasing to God. What's some things there we must do to please God? Uh, I've got a little acrostic I use for my, uh, for my introduction. And there, uh, if we're going to please God, we must put Him first. Put Him first. Amen. 
Put Him first. Uh, I talk about Joy a lot, and I've used this through the years a long time. Years ago, I started using this. I don't know if I heard somebody else say it or not, or where it came from. But anyway, I like it. And, and, and I like the word joy. J-O-Y. Uh, right now, we can be happy. I'm happy right now. I'm in a good place. It's so warm in here and, and feels good. It's just right, man. The temperature is just right. Uh, whatever it is in here, it's good. I like it, whatever it is. Right now, with my vest on and, and my long sleeve shirt. This morning, I came out of the house with a short sleeve blue shirt on. And uh, and I got outside, and man, that cold hit me. And I said, boy, this ain't going to work today. And I turned around and went back in. I got me a long sleeve blue shirt out. And uh, Mr. Betty was there, and, and, and I got that blue shirt out. And I put it on. I put on this old vest. I wore this thing everywhere. And uh, it's wore out several times over. And uh, it just didn't go busy. Said, Miss B said, that don't go good with that gray. Gray and that blue don't go good. And she said, you got a gray shirt. And I went back in the closet. I changed again. And I found a gray shirt. I got that put in his long sleeve. And uh, got it put on this morning. And so, uh, <laughs> we, I've, I've changed clothes many times more than trying to get things right. But, uh, but anyway, uh, we, uh, as we put Him first in our life and, and as we uh, uh, getting used to everything and getting here and getting out of time getting down here this morning. But anyway, uh, uh, we need to put God first. If we're going to have joy, and I'm happy this morning, but if you're going to have real joy, joy comes from the Lord Jesus. Joy comes from God. So if you're going to have joy with that letter J, I like the acrostics, amen, as you can tell. But with that letter J, amen, who are we going to put first? Jesus, amen. We're going to put Jesus first. All right, then uh, with that letter O, who are you going to put next? Who comes in second? Others, other people, amen. Then with the letter Y, who comes in last place? That ain't the way it is, Brother Dean. Brother Dean loves Brother Dean. I'm going to be to you, honest with you. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I really love Brother Dean. I really like to help Brother Dean. Hey, my sweet Brother Dean. I love Brother Dean. If I'm not careful, you know what comes first? Jesus. Yeah, no, not Jesus. No. If I'm not careful, hey, man, Dean comes first. I get it backwards. I get me first, and then maybe others are then Jesus. Hey, Amen. But need to have Him first. Put Jesus first in our life. Have the joy of the Lord in our life. Then uh, that letter L there, and please, you know, if we're going to please Him, uh, we need to uh, love God, love God's Word, amen, and, and love God's people. Uh, we need the love of God in our life if we're going to uh, please God. Uh, Jesus said, this is how people are going to know you're one of mine. When you have love one for the other, one for another, amen. you got love in this place. It feels good in here this morning because there's love here, amen. That's the way it should be. Uh, we're to uh, love the Lord first and, and then love others, amen. But uh, uh, that word, but love that we're talking about here, we're talking about a godly love. We're not talking about a love that loves, you know, just because that, uh, y'all, uh, Brother Brad seen me do this a many time, amen. We're not to love people just because they love us, you know. I pat Brother Brad on, Brad on the back, you know, you know, I love Brother Brad, amen. Happy young brother, you little happy, amen. Amen. Uh, we're good now, amen. I love you, you love me. We're a great big family, amen. No, but anyway, I don't know where that comes from. But anyway, we're to love. We're to love one another. A godly love. We're to love our spouse, our wife, with a godly love, a sacrificial love. Amen. And that's what the love of God is. It's sacrifice. And it's very hard for us to love that way. Yeah. We can love long as somebody's kind of getting along with us. Right. We're all right, you know. We're good to go. But it's better when, but what God wants is love no matter what. Love no matter what. Uh, folks that's been over to Bradshaw, West Virginia, they met uh, Sue. Uh, they call her Amen Baby. And Sue, uh, uh, she's moved down to blow the other side of Grundy, Virginia now. But she used to be there in Bradshaw. And, and Sue said a many a time, Brother Dean, you started this church just for me. And that back when we first started the church, I didn't know a soul there. Nobody knew me. And uh, once in a while, we, at the very beginning, Sue might be the only one there. Uh, and so, uh, but anyway, uh, Sue had, has a hard time with things. And, and uh, Sue gets excited and she's able to do this or that and, 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 all, and all kinds of stuff. But uh, we're to love uh, folks just like Sue. Everywhere I go, everywhere I preach, I mention Sue. Uh, somehow, some way. Because, uh, again, 
the Lord loves them. She's special. My God loves her. Amen. And uh, a lot of the churches around there, when we first went there, wouldn't let her in their service. They wouldn't let her come in the building. They wouldn't let her in. They'd tell her to leave. Uh, it's not to come in because she might get excited and mess up their service a little bit or something. But uh, but she does all right. I tell you, Susan, and we're to love Sue. And, uh, and we're to love everybody. It's, it's, it, but it's a sacrificial love. It's not a love like we're talking about, human love. And then uh, we're going to please God and eat, eat His Word. This morning, uh, you had uh, some kind of breakfast. Uh, this morning, I had eggs and, and uh, 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 gravy and sausage and uh, uh, what's them little taters? Tater tots. Tater yeah. Hash breakfast. Hash breakfast. Had hash browns and gravy and uh, Betty, but I had some good breakfast. Amen. Some good old coffee, and uh, I had a good breakfast. I eat a good breakfast this morning. I really, I love that. I, matter of fact, I've eaten that the last three mornings. Don't tell no one. Don't tell my doctor. Amen. But anyway, uh, uh, we I love to eat, and uh, but you know, uh, spiritually speaking, we're not going to grow in the Lord, folks. We don't eat this word. That devil, he don't, he don't. The, the, our big guns and all of our big, big bombs and explosives and all that stuff don't bother him so much. Don't bother the devil so much. He's a powerful being. He is much more powerful than we give him credit for. I'll tell you what. Uh, this right here, Jesus, when he fought the devil three times, he said, "It <coughs> is written. It is written." Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Where's every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God? Right here. Yeah. This is a King James Bible right here. I like it off the good, but whatever. There, I'm not fussed with you on that. But thank God for His Word. Amen. And we need to eat His Word. If we'll eat this Word, we'll get strong in the Lord. We won't, the devil won't be able to beat us around so much to slap us around. And uh, if we will get in this word, this word will defeat the devil. Yeah. And this many times, many preachers come to the United States and back in the olden days, back in the years gone by, and, and they would come here and, and they come to see what was what was so great about the United States. What was so wonderful about the United States of America. They would stay here, they travel around, then they went back to Europe and they said, This is what's great in the United States of America. This is what makes the United States strong and what it is. And they said, it's a preaching on the Word of God from the, from the pulpits of the United States of America. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You get mad if you want to. But days go by, there were some old preachers preached the Word of God and we kind of laughed at them. Maybe we didn't know. Uh -huh. Now it's coming to pass. Now it's coming out. All these things they warned us about said, you better be careful, amen. Amen. We must be careful, folks. And eat this good word. Then uh, we must surrender. Surrender all. April 28, 1983, uh, Sunday night, I surrendered all to the Lord. Amen. I've been saved as a little boy at Harmony Baptist Church uh, as a little fella. And, uh, but I was 30-year-old, and, uh, and I just uh, was miserable. I was miserable. I was living in a house that somebody else owned, and they were letting me and my family live upstairs. I had three little boys. Little tiny fellas, and uh, best wife ever lived, ever been born. Miss Betty, you ain't gonna. She's a Proverbs 31 wife. She's a she's a woman of God, and and uh, she been good to me. And I wouldn't be here today had not been for Sister Betty staying with an idiot, a fool. I mean, a fool. You cannot understand what a fool that she was living with. At Thirty years old, April 28, 1983. I heard the word of God on the radio. An uh, old empty bottle sitting there, great old big bottle, empty, and I was miserable. Miserable, miserable mess. And uh, they encouraged us to. There, that radio program preacher encourages us. He's gone on to heaven now. Uh, but uh, Brother Jack Hudson from Charlotte, North Carolina, he uh, was on the radio. And, uh, and I just said, Lord, if you could do something with me. Please do it. Amen. Please do it. Buddy, amen. It's been good ever since. Amen. amen. And uh, I, I, I just uh, thank the Lord for His blessings and, 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 and for second chances amen. and third chances and fourth chances and fifth chances amen. and chance after chance after chance after chance. He's a forgiving God. Amen. How can He forgive me? Oh, yes, He can. 
You don't know what I've done. He'll forgive you. He can forgive you. He's a big Savior, amen. amen. He's not a little Savior. If He couldn't save us, amen, He wouldn't have come and died on the cross. You see, He left heaven. He was the first missionary. Left heaven, came to earth, died on the cross. Was buried. He was sinless. Absolutely perfection. No sin in Him. No sin about Him. And he was perfect. He hung on the cross and died. There He was buried. One day. Two days. Third day. Rose from the dead. Amen. And he'll never die again. Died one time and rose again for us that we can be saved today. And forgiven. And forgiven. And forgiven. And forgiven. And forgiven. Oh, David said, God said, David, don't be to judge you. You want the people to judge you. And David said, Oh, no. Don't let them people judge me, Lord. Oh, no. You judge me. Yeah. God's got grace. Grace. Amen. Grace. Amen. grace. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Then uh, uh, we're to submit ourselves to that letter S there. And uh, again, submitting to one another is a whole different thing uh, than even surrendering. There's a lot, di there's a difference there. In total, uh, submitting one to another, as Brother, uh, Brother said, it's a Sunday school lesson about. Amen. And, uh, and I'll, go, I'll move right along. Amen. We're going to cover that today. Amen. Enter in the, uh, then we're to enter in the Holy of Holies. Amen. The Bible said to come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Come boldly to God. We don't have to go to a priest. We don't have to go to some persons uh, on this life. We just go to Jesus. We go straight to Him. Amen. We go straight to God through Jesus Christ His Son. And God hears us and answers us. You mean God talks to you? You better believe He talks to me. Amen. If He didn't, I wouldn't be here. There's no way. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, so many religious say, oh, you can't talk to God. He can't talk straight to you. Oh, yes, He can. Yeah, yes. By His Word. That's why we're to read this Word. He'll, draw, he'll speak to us through His Word. Many times I read the Bible, and I've read that verse over and over and over. Then I read it again. And man, it's different. Man, it's good. I had never seen that before. All right, are we pleasing to God? Then let me get through the sermon here. If we're going to please God, we need to have the right kind of offering. There, uh, Bible talking about there, uh, uh, Cain and Abel. And uh, Cain and Abel brought their offerings to the Lord. And there, Cain brought his offering. It was a plant. It was a greenery. He brought his plants to the Lord there for his offering. And Abel, he brought a blood offering. God rejected Cain. He said, no, Cain, I will not accept the uh, plants. I will not accept that kind of offering. You must bring, bring a blood offering. It must be a certain way. It must be a, a blood from an animal. It must be the, a good animal. It can't be the old animal that's hopping around and, and got something wrong with it, you know, and, and can't walk good. That's one I'm going to kill, you know, and give that to them. I don't need it anyway. You know, it's going to die anyway. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't, you can't bring that. He said, you bring a, the best you've got, the very best lamb on the place. You bring that one. Bring that blood, and I will forgive your sin. Uh, Cain wouldn't do that, and but uh, uh, Abel did, and that's the difference. There, God accepted Abel; He, re he re rejected Cain. We must have the right offering. We must have the blood. And you see, when they brought their blood offering, there, uh, their animal, their lamb, there, that was just a covering. Sin was just covered then from year to year. But they were looking forward to a time when, to a time when Jesus would come and hang on the cross, and He would pour out His perfect blood. Then they would what? Then not only was it just covered then, but when Jesus came, they were looking forward to a time when Jesus would come. And when Jesus came then, their sin was not covered any longer. It was gone. Amen. Big difference. Amen. Big difference. Amen. Old Testament, sin was covered from year to year. New Testament, after Jesus came and rose from the dead and ascended back to heaven, they're gone. Amen. Amen. Can't find them anymore. Amen. You might pick them up. Somebody else might dig them up, but hey man, hey man, they're gone. Let them stay gone. Hey man, let's walk in the newness and light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He loves us, hey amen. Yeah. Uh, what do I serve him? I serve him because I love him. Yeah. <clears throat> Why do I come here this morning? Because I love him. Amen. Why do I get up and drive down through here and oh, I had a good time, but I miss Miss Betty. And she's just not feeling good. In the last couple of weeks, she ain't felt. She, she, but Miss Betty, I'll tell you what, it takes a lot to get her out of it. She loves home. Amen. She loves Perlier, North Carolina, there where we live now. now. On that house now. 
Amen. God's good. He's good. He's good. Amen. Then uh, not only that, but uh, uh, Enoch there, he had a, a testimony that he loved God because the Bible said there he walked with God. You see, after you get saved, folks, that's just getting you on the right side. When you get saved, you're on God's side. Then when we're born in this world, we're born on the wrong side. And when we get saved, we're put on the right side. Then we get we join the right team. Amen. Amen. Thank God today. And so. Uh, we, we need the help from the Lord and we have to have the Lord there. We've got to have Him in our life so that we can walk with Him. And after we're saved, after we're on God's side, then we walk with God. Yeah. Brother Brad, Brother Cooper over there is your son. Amen. No matter what he does, he's still your son. Amen. Amen. He's your son, Miss Jamie. And no matter if he does good, he's your son. If he does bad, which he don't, he does good. Hey, I mean, he's your son. <laughs> Who's who here, amen? And, uh, but he's your son. And when the Bible said there in John, John 1, 12, the, for them that believe upon the name of God, to them gave you the power to become the sons of God. So when you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you're put into God's family. Amen. Now listen, just like Cooper, you're in God's family then. Nothing can change that. Amen. But listen, what it is there though, you can obey God and be an obedient child of God, or you can be a disobedient child of God. Amen. 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 Nothing can change that. I'm Willard Crane's son. I'm a junior. He's a senior. And nothing can change that. I'm his son. I was his son when I was the meanest rascal ever been here. The meanest person in Wilkes County. I was his son. Amen. But he prayed for me. Amen. Amen. He prayed for me. And on April 20th, 1983, it got right. Amen. Because God got me right. Caught me up there. He got me right. Amen. Amen. Then lastly, there uh, we have this uh, Noah. There Noah, the Bible said that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah lived in a time there when that uh, it was everybody around him was sinful. The world was wicked and sinful. And Noah lived in a time there of sinfulness. But Noah, he uh, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God told him to build the ark and he obeyed God. He built the ark there, saved him and his family. Uh, eight people saved there in that age there, in that generation, that time. Uh, we uh, Then how can we please God? We must walk by faith. Walk by faith. We're to grow in the Lord. When we're first saved, we're a babe in Christ. When we're first saved, we're like a, a little fellas around here. And the little tiny ones, you know, can't do anything for themselves. They've got to be fed. They've got to be diapered. They've got to have, have everything done for them. Same way as a Christian, a baby Christian a lot of times. And sometimes you may be a baby Christian for 20, 30, 40 years. If you don't grow. Yeah. Billy Graham said he grew fast uh, in the Lord because he obeyed quickly. God told him to do something good. He didn't wait around. He got to it. Amen. And so that's been helpful to me so much. Uh, it's not, uh, there's a song out now. It's not how you walk on water, but it's how you walk on land. Amen. Amen. I love that song. Amen. Let me uh, finish up here. And uh, we'll, I'm, let, me, let me read you this book jacket here and I'm done. Let me get down here so I quit lying and say it and, and get done. Amen. Uh, I found this I have a book, I read part of this book, it's pretty good. But I don't know anything about these people. I don't know where they're at today. I don't know a thing about them. I didn't know anything about them before and I don't know anything about them since. But here's a little thing here, gives a little testimony of this woman. Once upon a time there was a woman who, and this is true, uh, there, once upon a time there was a woman who had everything this world holds dear. Denise Jackson had her handsome prince, country music legend, Alan Jackson. She had two young daughters and a brand new bouncing baby. Denise's staff took care of her every need. She wore designer gowns and enormous diamonds. From the outside, all was well. But inside, Denise was discovering that building her life around her husband and his colossal career just wasn't working. She was stressed and pressed constantly trying to control her world, worried about what everyone else might think, ignoring the relationship that mattered most. Somewhere along the road to success, she'd lost her roots. Her childhood faith felt cold and old, and God felt far away. Then Denise's fairy tale life fell apart. The wealth and fame were still there, but Alan was gone. The precious love story that had begun when they were teenagers seemed doomed, their marriage broken. It was then when she felt shattered, shamed, and wounded that Denise's story took a surprising turn. She fell in love all over again, but not with Alan, but with God himself. She found the perfect love she had longed for all her life. Uh, this is my story. It's just my, I, I can identify with this so much. 
And in that discovery, she also found the keys to forgiveness and a new, deeper love in her restored marriage to Alan. When you get things right with him, all other relationships get right. This unusual story doesn't have a happily ever after ending that's tied up neatly with a nice pink bow. As Denise relates so importantly, her life these days is more unpredictable than ever. But in, in her journey with God, she's found she doesn't worry about trying to control what's coming next. For life can be a great adventure when it's all about Him. Amen. I used to think, I've said this for years, it's all about Him. And I point up, and I thought I started that. Evidently, I did. <laughs> the Lord did. Amen. And it's all about Him. How about you today? Are you pleasing unto God? You see, it's not hard to please God. It's not some big old terrible hard thing to do. It's just walking with Him. It's just having a relationship with Him. If Miss Betty's mad, I know that. I know it quickly. And I'll try to get that fixed up. Miss Betty, what's wrong? What did I say? What did I do? You know, what's wrong? And we get that fixed up. We don't let it go on and on and on. Amen. That's the same way it is with the Lord. Man must have that relationship with Him. As this morning, how about you? As, are you pleasing unto God? He loves you. He died for you. And He just wants us to love Him. Just love Him. Just love Him. And you have to love Him in your way. You can't love Him like I do. You're not me. We're all individuals. You must love Him like you love Him. He speaks your language. He speaks Brad language. He speaks Dean language. He speaks Jamie language. I don't speak their language. Amen. When it comes to this stuff, when it comes to a relationship with the Lord, I don't know, you see. But He knows me. And He knows how to get my attention. He knows what it takes to get my attention. And like Miss Betty does. We've been at it a long time. Amen. Amen. God bless you. How about that relationship? <laughs>